Good evening. It's Tuesday. <laughs> My name is Lane Nelson. I am pastor at East Side Lutheran Church, and it is Tuesday, which means we are gathering together. We are thinking about faith in this little exercise we call Together in Faith. I happen to be sitting here tonight with a very esteemed colleague of mine. That would be, of course, Pastor Joel Pakin. I'm not going to throw up any bubble over his head right now, but we not will yet. give him a little Warn screen me, time. Though. Warn me, though, yeah, All right. when you throw up the bubble. Yep. Right now it just says, welcome, right <laughs> above right, your okay. head. I hope that life is finding all of you well, no matter where you might be tonight. Now, it is holding so true. On Tuesdays, we have this wonderful pattern of good weather. And I don't know if it's because we get together on Tuesday nights, but I think it really oh, is. Of course. But it was like 70-something today yeah. in Sioux Falls in March, which is just unheard of. So hopefully wherever you are at, it has been a wonderful day and you had a chance to get out and enjoy some weather as well because we know that the cold snap is coming tomorrow and there's even talk of snow. But before we get to that, we are going to enjoy the now and we are going to enjoy our conversations. If there is anybody out there listening and talking um, with us, please say hello. We would love to know that you are there and give a little shout out and say hi to you. I see we have at least two already, so hello to Colleen, hello to Carol. Welcome to the conversation. We are having this conversation called Together in Faith, and during this season of Lent, we are reading the Bible together. So, but before we talk about that, what is Lent, you might ask? Well, Lent is the 40-day period between Ash Wednesday and Easter when traditionally we focus um, on our walk with Christ. It used to be in the early church, a period when people who were getting ready to be baptized would um, spend this time getting ready in preparation for baptism. But now it's a chance for us to kind of shift our focus a little bit and then focus on the life of Christ and our own discipleship. How are we doing that at Eastside, you might ask? Well, we are working our way through some of the epistles. We are reading a chapter a day through Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Hebrews, John 1, 2, and 3. And if you would like a daily email about that, you can go to eastsidelc.org slash Lent and sign up and get a wonderful help for all of that during this time frame. But tonight... We are gathering and we will be looking at the book of Philippians. But before we jump into Philippians, I know that um, Pastor Joel is seated with me here. Yeah. He said he had something he wanted to show you about coloring. That's true. And, um, of course, did I bring it in with me? Oh, no! no. I, I, I can run down the hall here. Yes, All well, right, you run down the hall. All right, okay. Now, if we could, like... Show Joel running down the hallway. There he goes. Look at that. That's that's some quality Bible study time right there, isn't it? Yep. A little inside piece. And he's back just like that. That was like Olympic sprinting record time. Yeah, man. And in Birkenstocks. And so. in Birkenstocks. All right. Or, so. as they call them, Air Jesus shoes. Ah, right. is that? Mm -hmm. Who is they? Yes, they call them... Air Jesus shoes, Birkenstocks. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, so I had to. Um, uh, I was chatting with Pastor Lane about giving this. Uh, where am I? Focus here. Am I focus here? You are here. I'm over here. Yep. Hi. <laughs> so uh, we had our first submission for the um, East Side Coloring Project from Ray Lynn, six and a half year old Ray Lynn. Woo! Way to go, Ray Lynn. Uh, Colored uh, one of our stained glass windows. This is a uh, twelve-year-old Jesus in the temple. Let me zoom in for you there. Yeah, and uh, it's really great. So, Raylan, thanks for sharing your coloring project with me, and now with everybody. And so, um, wanted to share that not only Raylan's project, but if anyone else out there is working on a coloring project, we have uh, two stained glass windows up, and I'm working on a third right now, and uh, that'll be up in a day or two. Uh, would love to see some of your coloring projects that we can share with the world. So feel free to either take a snapshot of your coloring project and send it to me, joel at eastsidelc.org, 
or uh, drop it off as uh, this one appeared in my inbox. So thanks, Ray Lynn. Fabulous. And seeing how he's talking about colors, I would like to draw your attention to another color. Oh. My hat right now you might see is green. And oh, look, there's a logo on it. It says NDSU. Tonight at 8 <laughs> o'clock, the NDSU men's basketball team will be playing for the championship of the Summit League. So depending on when you are participating in this conversation, you can roll right from this on over to the NDSU basketball game. That's right, Connie. You can watch the NDSU playing for the title. But before we jump into all of that, we want to say another hello to Karen, who is with us, and thank you as well, to Colin, and to Harriet, to Dorothy, to Irene, to Dixie, and to Brenda. Awesome. And she says, good job, Ray Lynn. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, as mentioned, we are making our way through this together in faith, focusing on, on Philippians. And so a little bit of background about this book before we talk about some more specifics and, and things that we love. A, a, little, a little background on Philippians. It is four short chapters long to make an awkward sounding sentence. <laughs> so there's not that much to it. A person can read the whole book easily in one setting if you weren't sitting down to go through one chapter a day. Or you can read one chapter a day for four days and then go back and read the whole thing right. and pull that out. It was written, of course, to people in the city of Philippi, which is a city on the north end of the Aegean Sea on a main east-west road um, from the Roman Empire to the rest of the world. It was written, of course, by the Apostle Paul, and this is one of those letters that is what they consider an undisputed letter right. from Paul, as opposed to somebody from the Pauline school, as we talked about a week ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone kind of is in agreement that yep. Paul is definitely the writer of this letter for various reasons, right? Yep. Yeah, one of the things we talked about a little bit before the session, though, was, was that we think it might be kind of a greatest hits letter. Yeah. That uh, uh, that what we have today is an, is an assemblance of multiple letters, possibly three different letters that have been kind of um, put together uh -huh. later on. So even though they're all authored by Paul, yep. they're potentially, and all to the church in Philippi, they're kind of addressing kind of different things in, or written in different little time frames. Yeah. But all to the same group of right. people. Same group of people, yeah. We'll throw up this little map. Now, you will quickly notice that Philippi is not on this map, but if you can see it all, my little gray circle here, I'm moving around on the screen. Follow it. We go down the water, down the water, sneak in here between Athens, up through the Aegean Sea. Look at that. Right there, roughly, is the city of Philippi. So you can see it would have been on that east-west trade route, as Pastor Joel mentioned. So yeah. located right there. And we're back in Sioux Falls, <laughs> just like that, the magic of the Internet. A little bit more about this book of Philippians. We ask this question that's a part of our Lenten theme, so what's going on? Mm -hmm. And what's going on in the text? And then what's going on with these same themes in the text in our own lives? That's what's been guiding us. Well, Paul is more than likely writing this letter from prison. Well, there is a little bit of dispute as to where it's written or maybe pieces of it where he was in Ephesus or, you know, um, sure. other places. But probably writing it from prison during the reign of Nero. Now, I asked Pastor Joel if he would say a little bit about yeah. who Nero was and what significance that might have in our context. Sure. Okay, so, so Nero is, um, well, he's a tyrant. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's just uh, um, he's one bad dude. Yeah. Um, and uh, he he assassinates his mother. Ufta. Uh, he um, gets his trusted advisor to commit suicide. He hmm. basically is yeah. He's just a really really bad guy. And and there's some theory right that that um, so Rome in the 30s 40s 50s consistently had these massive fires. And there's a, a big fire that takes place in 64, okay. which is right around the time that Philippians, sure. it's in that window when Philippians is written, whether it's one letter or whether it's three letters, but it's in that window. 
and and Paul would have potentially been in prison at that time. Yep. And so there's this massive fire that happens, but it, it's not like it's um, although it's very big. The the burning of Rome in sixty four is um, a massive fire, but it, it was one of those things that was happening like consistently. Huh. Every you know they just every in fact earlier emperors before Nero actually had started fire brigades. Like they had, like, this is what we do when we have fire because it happens so often. Sure. Yeah. It just didn't happen as massively as the fire in 64 happened. Yep. And so there's some thought um, that uh, this historian, uh, his name is Tacitus, who writes the, about Roman history, uh, that he writes that, that in a history of Rome that then that fire is blamed on the Christian church. Sure. And so that is listed as one of those persecutions of Christians that Nero kind of it takes aim at Christians and blames the fire on them. And there's some debate in history as to sure. how much that is true or how much Tacitus is is um, leaning into the abuse of Christians and the, the blaming of Christians is happening later. Because Tacitus is eight years old when sure. the fire happens in 64. So he has a, you know, he's, he's not the... Um, full-fledged historian at age eight right right <laughs> but some of the other um things that that go along with that yeah. is you know it was just a dangerous time to be a person in rome but yeah. especially dangerous to be a christian in rome and you know the the stories are that they were being thrown to the lions and lit up as torches and anyway yeah. regardless it right. was just a really rough time to to be a an unprotected citizen yeah. yeah, yeah, and it seems like Nero uh, is um, uh, equal opportunity um, with lots of people. If, mm-hmm. he, if he doesn't like you, he'll find a way to, um, you know, he'll torture you. <laughs> so in the midst of all of that, we get this book of Philippians, which if you sit down and read it, it reads like a warm letter to friends. <laughs> and Paul is writing to this group of people in this church that he had started and he is just having a, a nice conversation with them, very supportive of them. It's been called the most positive book in the Bible. The word joy and the word rejoice are repeated um, over and over again. And some of the themes that jump out in this are then um, persistence in faith and Paul's the example. Even as he is going through these tragic things, he's saying, Stay strong in your faith. Find joy in your sufferings. Consider suffering um, to be a glorious thing that we do on behalf of Christ. He then also talks a whole lot about humility and and self-emptying. And there's this wonderful Christ hymn in chapter 2 that we might touch on a little bit about how he uses an example um, of not worrying about your own interests but the interests of others. And it's more important for all of us to be of the same mind and that's the mind of christ when when we did the uh exercise last week around the word bubble like people yeah out their themes, uh-huh, uh-huh. those are exactly the themes that came out in the word bubble right huh. joy complete humbled i'm looking at that image right now that sure was in yeah the email so uh sharing in the spirit joy complete humbled emptied longing for you all huh which is really interesting if we think about that in the context of our covid kind of you know physical distancing mm-hmm. right now longing for you all that's a theme in the letter uh standing firm in one spirit uh i don't see if i can uh yeah striving side by side that's the other one so all of those themes that you were just saying uh all of us as we were reading it we were picking up on those same themes which yeah. is really really great i personally just love the book of philippians and in part is because of Um, This theme of finding joy in sorrow, um, Paul writes a little bit about that in Romans chapter 8, about turning good out of bad situations, but we see that real powerfully here in, in the book of Philippians. But also, I really resonate so strongly with Philippians because of that positive impact that that runs through all four of these chapters. Now, something you might not know about me um, is that positivity is one of my strong traits. What? Wait a second. I'm sorry. What? This positivity. Is new, this is news to me. In fact, <laughs> if, you take, if you take the strength finders test, you know, okay. one of those yeah, personality inventories, yeah. positivity is 
far and away my my number one trait on okay. strength finders. So I guess it makes sense that I, I like this book that's full of joy and rejoicing yeah. and encouraging and uplifting and, and building up. So I don't know. That's that's what I find there because this book really is encouraging us to be persistent in faith even in the midst of yeah. of adversity and, and that's such a Paul thing and it's so strong here and and I put here on the screen that Paul inspires us because of our connection with Christ and that God can take even these dark moments in history like we've just been referencing as the lived context mm-hmm. and bring out of them something good and and I'm speaking to you wherever you are at tonight as a word of hope that we get from Paul that if you are experiencing a dark time that Know that that's not the end all of the situation, but because of our connection with Christ, good can come out of those situations. And, and even what seems like a, a tragedy in which we cannot escape, through God's work in our lives, good can come out of that as well. And, and so if you take nothing else away from this study of Philippians tonight, Hopefully that's a, a reminder to you that there is hope and that God can mm-hmm. change our situations and that we're called to be persistent in our faith. If, if you were, uh, as you were just sharing that lane, yeah. that um, verse 15 out of chapter 1 was yeah. kind of in my view on huh. the screen. Some proclaim Christ out of envy and rivalry. And I like... Oh, yeah, I've experienced that. Someone who (laughs) proclaims Christ out of envy or rivalry, Mm -hmm. like that is a different, very different experience from, but others from goodwill. Okay, yeah. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that that, uh, it's just what a really uh, complex understanding uh, that you can have that. Like when somebody shares with you the good news and it doesn't, feel good to you well well maybe that's that proclamation out of rivalry out of envy yeah right that's uh that's yeah and so huh. so like that that eternal optimism uh-huh. that you were referencing for yourself right well the book just starts out that way if i could yeah. read a little yeah, bit please. chapter one starting in verse three yeah right um and, and i love this i thank my god every time i remember you consistently praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I'm confident in this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That verse 6 also, that I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion, is so reassuring um, for me. Yeah. Because it's kind of, you know, there's that old adage of God isn't finished with me yet. Well, that's in essence what we have here, but it also is that reminder that God has started something in us. And if it doesn't feel like we've reached the end of it, that's okay, and God will not give up on us. And as we are persistent in our faith, God will continue to work in and through and and change us for who God needs us to be in that moment, which might be different a year down the road, two years down the road. Yeah. What have you. Yeah. Um, A quick hi to Alice, a quick hi to Carol, um, and thank you for your studies as well. And hello to Nyla. Nice to have all of you with us this evening. Um, The beautiful weather, and here they are with us talking about Philippians. That just speaks volumes of of these people who are with (laughs) us, so thank you. So... That's what jumps out to me right out of the gate. What's another passage maybe that jumps out to you or maybe that some of the um, people following along on our weekly or our daily Bible study sure, or emails have liked? people pulled yeah. out. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't uh, ask that, uh, well, give a favorite kind of verse. It was more just common themes okay. that we kind of talked about. Um, and I, if you I have also, a favorite verse, yeah, please throw in, in the, the comments. Chat. People would yeah. love to see that. Yeah, what is your favorite verse from yeah. Philippians? That would be a lovely uh, thing to just like publicly claim. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because there, there, there is a breadth here. Um, uh, to uh, well, um, Lane was was you know sharing there that that whole piece about I thank my God every time I remember you. Um, and and that part about uh, bringing it to completion, I have referenced that oftentimes huh. in in various settings about like, uh, does it feel like the end? Well, no. Well, then it's not the end. 
<laughs> sure, sure. Uh, um, but then, you know, there is that complexity of, of uh, what's the tension happening in Philippians? What's going in the, t- the town of Philippi and the yeah. community now? Um, and, and so, you know, when he makes like further in chapter one, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And this comes after he's already kind of referenced that, well, some proclaim Christ out of envy or rivalry. So what does that look like to live in a manner worthy? Um, yeah, it's just, he, there is, he's referencing some tension. Um, it's really, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I can't say that those are my favorite verses, mm-hmm. but, uh, but uh, they are interesting in their context. So um, make my joy complete. That's that. Uh, that was referenced as one of the the, the people was referencing that. We're getting into chapter two. Okay. I don't know if I'm if I'm going too fast here, Lane. But um, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, yeah. being full accord in one mind. And and we can you know and whether whatever the setting is when you meet someone and you have um, agreement on more than even just an intellectual level. It's a deep emotion mm-hmm. when you find that with someone else, right? Uh, and and so it's just really well well phrased. Uh, just just lovely poetry that he's doing there. Yeah. I had that um, same passage highlighted in my Bible because it's, uh, well, you can't see this. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Beans. Maybe if we do really awkward camera work and go down like right. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere there, well, again. Yeah, right there, that highlighted <laughs> section. Um, it just And then following right after that verse, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interests of others. Mm-hmm. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And then he goes into this beautiful what they think was a hymn of the day Mm -hmm. that that people would all have known. And so Paul includes this as like putting a verse of your favorite hymn in a letter that you're writing and everyone goes, yeah, and they they speak to that. But it talks to them about that self-emptying nature of Jesus. Um, And I I think it's worth reading again, and you're following along in chapter 2, beginning with verse 6. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God but as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God so highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father." And maybe I like that too, because as a young boy um, growing up in Mm -hmm. Botno, North Dakota, it was just hammered into me of don't think better of yourself than you are, young man. You know, that kind of a thing. It's that Scandinavian piety that was formative in, in who I am. But I had none of that Paul piety really. growing up. None of that piety whatsoever. <laughs> Slovaks and Germans, piety, bah. Nah, nah. <laughs> Card playing, dancing, <laughs> make wine out of anything. Nice. nice. <laughs> but you know what I was looking at? when you, As you were reading the yeah. hymn, uh, the, there, there's a rhyming scheme there when you start looking at the Greek. Huh. It's really interesting. Uh, and it's just, I... I, I I'm going to embarrass myself if I try and pronounce the Greek here okay. in front yeah. of anyone. But well, then we'll put the camera focused on you. Oh, great. Yeah. great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, partner. <laughs> so, but but there is a, like like the, the, the Greek word that that is being translated as God here is theos. And then um, when you start um, looking at, like, exploited, it ends in that O-S sound again. Uh, and... and slave uh, uh, dolos it ends in the os so you start having this rhyming scheme so like it um it's almost like like if paul the like you know early greek hip-hop right you know ah! i mean it's just 
there's there's a there's a rhythm to it. And so if yeah. we were if we were reciting this, and again, this letter would have been written and then would have been recited in mass. Okay. Right? A peop, people would have gathered around in a house and mm-hmm. they would have recited this. We've got the new letter from Paul. And so so like there's a there's a there's a cadence to this. And it's just so there's a rhythm and we, we lose that a little bit in our English translation, yeah. but that certainly would have been happening. There would have been a beat. Yep. To that section of the letter, it's really, really fascinating. So now everybody has to um, sing those verses somehow <laughs> on their own at home. Yeah, right. Yep. You know, and stand in front of a mirror, no one will see, and start <laughs> singing Philippians. Yeah. Very cool. Look how learned this guy is. He's just whipping out the oh. the Greek just like that. That's awesome. Yeah, where where do we where do we go from there? I mean, we've got we've got five minutes left, well, right? And we were only halfway through the book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it's just such a uh, so many neat little passages that have become so familiar, I think, yeah. to so many people. Yeah. And and whether people have really sat down and read the book of Philippians um, recently, it's so short. They're familiar with these things. They're familiar with that Christ hymn, and. I'll just jump to a couple more of my favorite passages, right. which you'll we'll probably get to hear a little bit more about tomorrow night, Wednesday night, um, as we're preaching on Philippians on Facebook Live at 7. Um, chapter 4, starting in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Like, there's that word rejoice. Mm-hmm. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Jesus Christ. That phrase has been kind of paraphrased um, to don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Right. And I... I can't help but think, how different would our lives be if we were able to actually do that? Hmm. As someone who tends to worry about things, um, or at least to let them ruminate over and over, knowing full well that I don't need to, I, I do... But if we could not worry about every anything but pray about everything and let God be God and do the things that God does and find a way mm-hmm. to rejoice in the midst of that, sure. how different would our lives be and how much less stress might we have? And how can we take this message of rejoicing, as Paul is talking about in dire circumstances, and really let that live within us? Yeah. I mean, what do... What do you, in the plural, not just you, Pastor right, Joel, right, right. Yeah. need to let go of to experience God in the moment, regardless of what that moment looks like? Maybe on some level, I don't know if, if uh, uh, you ever uh, do this, Pastor Lane, um, but uh, if, if tradition is true then at least some of this letter, if not all of it, was written while Paul was in prison. Mm-hmm. And so is Paul writing the thing that he, to the Philippians, that he himself needs to hear? Yeah. You know, is this an aspirational letter where where he's like um, um, trying to, knowing that he doesn't have what he needs to get through that next moment, uh, um, writing to someone else, Saying, mm-hmm. I don't have what I need. I know that you may go through this too. Um, let me for a moment. Um, I've I've heard the phrase it. from from elder colleagues who are ministers, um, people who've been teachers and mentors throughout my life, say that preachers preach best what they need to hear most. Sure. Yeah. You know, right. maybe maybe that's where Paul was at. You know, yeah. looking at his own circumstances. Which then leads into one more of my favorite verses, but really one I think that is maybe the most well-known verse in, in all of Philippians. Okay. And that is 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah. me. Mm-hmm. That certainly was a helpful verse for me when I was in college and kind of being on my own for the first time and dealing with struggles. 
I know it's a, a verse that's often a favorite of high school students as you meet with them and are sharing scripture. It's something so tangible that they can cling to. Now, of course, Paul is writing about his circumstances and, you know, his life is being threatened sure. and there's all of these tensions about, you know, people trying to pull people out of the faith to some other religion. Right. I think, okay, so so just looking at that yeah. now in that context of, that's verse 13, 413, mm-hmm. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Verse 14, in any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. So... When we, if we just single out thirteen, it makes us about this individual thing. Yep, I can do all things uh-huh. through Christ. So yes, it's in the spirit of Christ. But then the very next thing she says is sharing in distress. It's about community. It's about communal sharing. It's about being of one spirit. So he's back to that theme. How do we then be Christ for the people who yeah. need us to be Christ for them? Yeah, yeah. So so. If we were to just, uh, if we were only consumed 13, we wouldn't get the fullness of it because the fullness of it is about communal experience. Mm -hmm. The good and the bad, the high and the low, all that. Yeah, there's another piece in here, and I forget what verse, and it doesn't matter right now. (laughs) But it... um, it's, It's like Paul is just, he's writing to these good friends, and he's saying, thank you. You were with me in difficult times, and I want to encourage you now as you might be experiencing difficult sure. times yourself. And that's people of faith supporting their brothers and sisters in faith in the midst of what they're going through. Yeah. Well, we have easily talked for a long time. <laughs> we have. Um, we are approaching that hour um, where it is time for us to close with luther's evening prayer good and so thank you to all of you who have been a part of these conversations with us tonight love to hear your feedback um hello to Kay. she's saying thank you to both you and i um so nice to to have you a part of the conversation too and karen glad that this was a helpful conversation for you tonight too yeah god bless each and every one of you, wherever you might be at and whatever you might be experiencing, may God continue to bring joy out of your own sorrow and be that presence for you, that we might then be that presence for someone else. So together we pray. I give thanks to you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected me today. And I ask you to forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously protect me tonight. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And then you are to quickly go watch the NDSU game and watch them win. Yeah. Good night, everybody. God bless you. We will see you later.